What does losing mean to you? Losing is something nobody wants, and some people deal with losing very well, others not. To me, losing is okay, I can deal with that, but that means that I do want to win the next time. It's always an adventure and not a destination. For some reason, I wanted to test myself, but I had no idea what I was getting into. This is my adventure of losing so many times that I wanted to do everything it takes to scrape out a victory. Now, almost nothing in Pokemon is actually impossible, but some runs can be pretty close and this is one of them. So yeah, going in, I really doubt if this is actually going to be possible. I'm talking of course about beating the entirety of Pokemon Platinum with only a ditto. And let's get right into that because we have a lot to talk about. Anyway, I get the first choice of my starter and I get to see my ditto for the first time. I replace Turtwig so Nathan gets a fighting type later in the game to fight ditto. But as it turns out this never made a difference. Anyway, let's get to the battle. My rival quickly gets the edge here. I need the extra turn to transform into my opponent and when he uses Leer enough, sooner or later my defense will be so low that I won't stand a chance. Damn it, I had to restart the entire game from scratch five times because I kept losing to Nathan and I forgot to save. But <laughs> yeah, you may lose this fight, right? What's the big deal? Well, I want the experience points and I'll tell you why in just a moment. Battle 6 goes a little more my way. I managed to scrape out a victory and we can continue. Now let's dive way deeper into the Pokemon that we are using. Ditto is a normal type that literally only learns one move. It learns no TMs and its only level up move is the move Transform. Well, besides struggle if you run out of moves. But what actually happens when you transform into your opponent? Well, you copy almost everything. Typing, stats, ability and moveset. But there are two key differences. The first one being my HP and level stay the same. And that is great and all, but if I transform into a level 3 Bidoof, I get its attack stat. Even if I myself would be level 60 or something, that would still on paper mean that I would need several hits to take it out. And without really going into the math, how much damage you actually do is also somewhat dependent on your level. So yeah, if I'm level 60 and I fight a wild Bidoof of level 3, I'm going to take it out in a single hit. But other than a scenario like that, leveling up is kind of negligible, but yes, it does matter something. But this difference is really terrifying. Because that means that theoretically, every fight in the entire game is going to be hard. And spoiler alert, there is no fight in this game that's safe. Really. And that's not to make the video more dramatic or anything, I am entirely serious. I lost to trainers that I have never lost to in my life, or even had any clue that they existed. Really, the difficulty of this run is insane sometimes. And that is also partly dependent on the second key difference, the moveset. Yes, we get the opponent's moves, but we only get 5 power points of each. And that is a real big problem, because let me bring up footage from a random wild encounter. I encounter a Kricketot. I transform into the Kricketot and yeah, it has no attacking moves. So I have to reset. And why is that? Because I can just use Struggle, right? Well, not really. See, Struggle was great in my Azuril run in Gen 3. It deals a quarter of the damage dealt back to me as Recoil. But I think Game Freak wanted away with many Struggle users because Struggle is way worse in Gen 4. Every time you use Struggle in this game, it deals a quarter of your max HP back to you. What? That's insane. See, I can run out of moves faster than the Kricketot I mentioned, but Struggle is going to take me out before I can KO the damn thing. So that's awesome. We are not strong enough for a wild Kricketot. <sighs> okay, so Ditto is awful, but let's fast forward a bit. We do some plot stuff and then the rival stops us again for a battle. Now he has done an upgrade to his team since our last battle. A Starly. And I hear you think, that thing is really weak, right? Well, that's actually great for my opponent. Because I have to transform into his first Pokemon. And if that's the weakest, things are going to be bad. 
and like, it's not even close. The Starly has really bad moves, and the rival is way stronger. I keep battling him again and again, but there's no way. Well then, that means I'm off to grinding. And not just grinding, I did some EV training. In short, how your stats evolve are dependent on a few factors. Mainly which Pokemon you take out. If you keep KOing Pokemon that specializes in one stat, you will gain more of that stat. So a Machop, for example, has a high attack stat. If I knock out plenty of Machop, my attack will increase more than other stats. But listen, there's only one stat that's useful to me, and that is HP, because the rest will be overwritten to what the opponent has. And to my knowledge, there is only one Pokemon that somewhat specializes in HP at this point. Bidoof! You all know Bidoof, the early round encounter. I don't think that there is anyone on this earth that's a genuine Bidoof fan. But seriously, I battled hundreds of Bidoof. I cannot look at one ever again. And frankly, battling this many is just boring. We keep on running in the early grass, run away from every wild encounter that isn't a Bidoof, and when we find them, we KO them. But KOing them is really hard sometimes. I'd say that I'd wide out to a wild Bidoof from full health in about 1 in 8 times. 1 in 8! Really, if I was lucky, I could scrape out a victory against two Wild Bidoof before I would have to run back to the Pokemon Center, because they would only know Tackle at this point. But from full health, I'd say 1 in 8 times I'd wide out. So yeah, that is awful. But what do I need to defeat the rival? Well, being level 13 when battling the Chimchar and having much luck. So basically what I need to have happen against the Starly is 1 or 0 Growls. If I get enough Growls, this is going to be really rough against the Chimchar, if I even make it that far. So basically, I am spamming Quick Attack on the Starly, and when it's KO'd, I level up to level 13. One last Quick Attack brings the Chimchar to half, and then... Bam! Critical hit struggle. Man, finally. What has it been, three hours? Oh, finally I can move on. But Nathan will be back, and let's not get excited. Because the two greatest roadblocks of the run are about to come up. The first two gym leaders. And let me tell you, Rourke made me question if this run is actually possible. So I started battling Rourke at level 13, and we have to transform into his Geodude, which only has two moves. Stealth Rock, which don't really help me all that much, and Rock Throw, which doesn't really do all that much either. Plus, it misses, I believe, 20% of the time. And oh yeah, he happens to be the Rock-type gym leader. My strategy was to prepare myself to using Struggle and making sure I leveled up to level 14 after the Geodude, but that really does not matter, because he has a Kranidos and an Onyx in the back who happen to be higher level and no better moves. So, are you seeing the issue? At this point, I've been battling Rourke for a little under an hour, and I've never even KO'd the Geodude. So, I started to feel some fear and dread. Now, why dread? Well, that is because of the reason why I would lose. It's not that Rourke's Geodude can really do all that much to me. I keep knocking myself out. I mean, listen, like I said before, struggle can be great in some gens, but Gen 4 isn't one of them. Struggle does a quarter of my max HP as recoil damage. So theoretically, without items, I cannot possibly win this battle. Yes, Struggle is regular effective, but that's nowhere near enough to KO Rourke's team with sky-high defenses. He completely annihilates me. I wanted to see how far I can make it in this run without items in battle. But really, this is as far as you can get. And trust me, after I decided that this run needs items in battle, Rourke is still really difficult. And I would lose to him over and over and over again. And that means that I have to get more levels. So that's where my fear and dread comes from. Because I need more HP, I'm just fainting too fast. So I start battling hundreds of more wild Bidoof. And with every level, I can KO more Bidoof reliably. But since HP is the only stat that carries over, I have to play Maniac and KO them a whole bunch. And that's boring as heck. 
but <laughs> whatever. So what do we need to defeat Rourke? Well, again, you need the greatest luck in the entire world. But also, you need to be level 21 and be good at math. <laughs> because it's down to numbers at this point. Items and money are very limited. I did white out twice or three times so far, where I actually lost money up until this point. So I could have done a little better. I know that. But anyway, I spent all my money on potions. Now you can pick up a few potions, one dire hit and one axe attack. And I am very confident in saying that without these items, this battle is impossible. I also have an axe defend available, but since we deal with such low numbers anyway, and the Geodude I transform into already has good defense, it's better to save this one. What I want against the Geodude is that he keeps using stealth rocks that won't have any effect, or rock throw misses, which are also great. Anyway, I would usually not get that much luck the entire time. With a combination of one potion, the axe attack and the dire hit, I was able to reach zero power points on the first Geodude while Rourke uses his first potion on him. The first struggle does enough to take it out and out comes the Kranidos. It keeps using Pursuit. Luckily that's not such a good attack, but I can only use Struggle, which does 16 HP of recoil damage at my current level. It's great to know that, but don't forget that's a big chunk of my health being depleted every single turn. So we have to use a lot of potions. But with every struggle, Kranidos gets lower and lower on HP. At this point I want as many critical hits as possible, since the recoil damage stays the same. After a while I am able to KO the Kranidos with 17 HP remaining. And when the Onyx comes out, I keep trying to heal as much as possible. Onyx is going to be a 3 hit KO and its first turn it uses Screech and hereby lowers my defense by 2 stages. At this point I start to worry and I decide to heal one more time. 2 rock throws bring me to 29 health. I get an incredibly lucky rock throw miss and I survive on 13 health. But I am out of healing items. <laughs> that sucks. One more struggle does finish off the Onyx, but the recoil KOs me as well, making me lose the battle. And this is the furthest I've gotten to this point so far. I can get more levels, and surely that would help situational, but since struggle does a quarter of my max HP, it doesn't really matter how high of a level I am. The recoil damage just increases alongside my level, and I have also battled every trainer I could. There are a few trainers that you can actually skip that are impossible to beat because of a lack of moves or quad resisting the moves I have to use. But by battling Rourke again and again, I have found little quirks that I will use in my strategy of knowing when to heal. When I finally made it to the Onyx again, I brought it below half and I used up all my remaining potions. I got him a red bar and my last potion brought me to 37 HP. But he also uses a potion, which is really scary. And boom, critical hit. Is this going to be enough to win? I'm not sure. His rock throw brings me to 17 HP. I use struggle again and... I survive on one health. A miracle happened. And this made me feel really good. I accidentally scared my roommate because I randomly started screaming in the living room. But wow, just wow, I've beaten Rourke with only a ditto on level 21. But had he gotten a critical hit, I would have lost. And now there's a bit more game to explore, which is fun. I battle every trainer I find, because we are out of money and items, so we need to stack up on new ones. A lot of plot stuff is coming up, and this gives me time to discuss another problem with ditto that I haven't even had time to discuss yet. Now. This was a problem in the Rourke battle as well, but since Ditto copies every stat, I will always have the same speed as my opponent. So every turn will be a speed tie, and that means that there's only a 50% chance that I go first. And some turns, especially the turn where I can knock out my opponent, it's essential that I do go first in that turn. If not, I take extra damage that I cannot account for, and that can really make these battles really tedious. I know that by now the Quick Claw is available, I believe in Jubilife City, but I totally forgot that. That item is the key to this run, 
but I will get that later, simply just because I forgot. When battling the first team Galactic Grunts, it becomes apparent that the speed issue is not a small issue. Most of these trainers have Glammeows, Krogunks and Zubats, and they can be a real problem. But for example, these Grunts outside of Floaroma Town. I needed a very specific set of things to happen if I wanted to win. And I got stuck on this part for half an hour. Two random Team Galactic Grunts. And speed is the real issue here. Of course I have no time to talk about every trainer individually because then this video would be hours long and it can with a ditto run. But let's cut it way shorter than that and just focus on the problem at hand. What going second means is that I can always get hit with extra poison, extra damage or worse, confusion. And the battle where this issue really shows itself is the battle against Commander Mars in the Valley Windworks. We have to transform into Zubat which is an awful Pokemon to transform into. It knows Bite, Leech Slife and Toxic. you think Toxic would be excellent, but not really because Zubat is immune to poison. Leech Life is a pretty bad move, but Bite is pretty okay. The problem is that Mars' Zubat takes away most of my health already, because I need to turn to transform and it's a 3 hit KO with a good range from there. And you can miss this range. The only thing Zubat is useful for is because Perugly, which is coming out next, knows Fake Out and Zubat has the Inner Focus ability, so it cannot flinch. I spent a solid, like, two hours trying to train up my Ditto on Wild Bidoof and trying this fight again and again. And this got me to level 23 and after the Zubat I would level up to level 24. On my successful attempt, I got a crit against the Zubat, threw Toxic on the Perugly and with an Orum Berry equipped, I managed to defeat the Perugly with 28 health left. Whew, a really lucky battle. So boss fights are pretty damn challenging in this game. But I'm fairly high level, surely it gets easier, right? Well, <laughs> no, 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 no. First we team up with Cheryl and I told you that every battle can be difficult, right? Well, I wasn't lying. Bugcatcher Philip and Bugcatcher Donald also had me stuck for over half an hour and I lost over 14 times to them. Basically, I needed to transform into Cheryl's Chansey and have her Chansey do all the work for me because of the lack of power points. So there is more RNG again. But I persevered and made it to Eterna City. And I'm telling you, this is where the two greatest sticking points of the run happened. The next gym leader, Gardenia, is a nightmare. There is literally no other way to describe her. So far, I made sure to skip all skippable grass trainers since the resisted moves. And I hear you think two things. Why is grass so much worse to fight? Well, because of the resistance of course, but also because most of the early grass trainers have awful moves and my ditto has to use those moves. Absorb and Leech Seed are the ones that I would find most. Secondly, you may think, if grass is really so bad to fight, why not stay as ditto and use struggle? No really, ditto has awful stats. I tried that a few times but one struggle does like 1 fifth, 1 fourth damage and 4 struggles and I'm out. And that is considering that I would never get intact during the entire run. So staying as ditto is not a reliable strategy during the entire run. It never worked out in a single fight. But to illustrate how awful this gym is, let's see how we stack up on the first trainer in Gardenia's gym. We are going to transform into a Cherubi. With Tackle and Leech Seed, we have to take out her Cherubi and the Roselia. But we are going to run out of moves and we have to use Struggle again. But luckily there are Super Potions available at this point. So after one or two turns of using struggle, I get taken down and I need to be aware of when I need to heal. In this fight, I usually got paralyzed a lot too, making me go second or not attack at all. I needed five super potions to take down only this trainer. Five! The next two trainers were even harder. But let's fast forward and talk about Gardenia herself. Because, oh man, this run took me months to do. And of course, I did not play every day, but seriously. I had this fight for about two months back and it still haunts me sometimes. 
Most definitely top five most difficult Pokemon battles I've ever had. And why is that? Well, there are many reasons, but the main ones are that Turtwig knows Reflect and Roserade is just too damn strong. Look, Gardenia is programmed to almost always use Reflect when the previous one wore off. Razor Leaf is my best attack, but it's physical. As long as her Reflect is up, it will do very little damage. Grass Knot is a special move and it's based on how heavy the Pokemon is. <laughs> Spoiler, that's not gonna do so much. Sunny Day is useless to me. Now what did I end up doing? The turn I transform, Gardenia almost always sets up Reflect. So I have to stall out the Reflect. I will use my only X special defense that I have picked up. This will last the entire battle and makes the Grass Knot of the Turtwig and the attacks of the Roserade a little more sustainable. Now as long as the Reflect is up, I keep spamming Sunny Day or the occasional Grass Knot. At one point, I will get a message that the Reflect wore off. That means that the next turn, she will set up a new one. But if I happen to win the Speed Tie, I can use Razor Leaf without a Reflect, so it does more damage. But as you know, this is only a 50% chance. A lot of time, I will lose this Speed Tie and it will not do so much damage because the Reflect has gone back up. But as long as I stay sharp, I will deplete its lives and it will use a Super Potion. Bad timed critical hits can make sure you take out Turtwig when Gardenia still has her Super Potion remaining. And that's really bad. Because that means that she will use it on her stronger Pokemon. Which is what I don't want, to say at least. So what I want is to deplete all my power points and then take out the Turtwig. Preferably with my last Reflector. So the Turtwig battle is just one long battle to prepare myself as best as I can to start using Struggle. Now Gardenia can swap the Turtwig into the Roserade while Reflect is up. And if this happens, you might as well reset. There is no way you'll win, she just pulled a GG. <laughs> because now you have to attack the Roserade with weak, not very effective attacks while she keeps inflicting massive damage onto you. Anyway, you will get attempts where the plan works and you can use Struggle on Roserade. She will use Magical Leaf, which does around 14 HP of damage. Now that's a problem because when I use Struggle, I will also receive 20 HP of recoil damage. So yes, I can inflict damage onto her, but every other turn I have to heal. And just as last time, healing items are really scarce at this point. But let's talk about another problem. <laughs> Roserade has Stun Spore. Which paralyzes me. And oh my god, did I get unlucky sometimes. My personal record is not moving for 5 turns in a row. Wanna know the probability of that? Less than 0.1%. It's a little less. Really. Oh, and my personal best for total turns not moving in the entire battles? 8. <laughs> so yeah, it would totally screw up my plan. And I do have Paralysis heals, but I only have two. And Stun Spore has a 75% chance to hit, and if it does, I can start all over again. But when I'm not paralyzed, you see can also use Poison Sting. And this does about 10 damage, I believe, but also has a chance to poison, which makes sure I get even more damage. I tried for over an hour, and I never even made it to Charon. My healing items are just draining way too fast and I take way too much damage. But <laughs> that's the nature of a ditto run, I guess. Leveling up won't really make a difference again. Sure, maybe very situational, but that's not worth the grind. If only I knew that I could have picked up the quick law. <sighs> yeah, but luckily I did find something else. In Eterna City, there is a herb shop. And when I found this out, I stored all my remaining money in getting as much herbs as possible. Because they are basically super or hyper potions, but cheaper. I went and fought every trainer that isn't impossible to get as much money as possible and buy as many as I can. So a little while later and I'm on level 30 with 91 HP. I have a Paralysis Cure Berry equipped. That means that the Roserade Stun Spore won't do anything for the first turn it uses it. Giving me one more turn. I use my last power point on the Turtwig and my Reflect is still up. 
I use struggle after struggle and keep healing almost every turn. The berry is the only reason why I haven't died yet by the way, because I would have fainted from an extra attack. I have to be cognizant of when to heal. I have potions, super potions and herbs. So when I heal and how much I heal, super important. Roserade would sometimes get a crit onto me, making sure I have to heal more. And please understand that crits are the worst and ruin almost all of my strategies. Now I have lost many runs where she just got an inopportune crit and it was over. Now in this battle I mostly risk the paralysis and I get good luck overall. I think I could move for two turns or so which is not so bad. In the end I whittle the Roserade down and I live on 18 HP while paralyzed. And out comes the Cherub. And man am I scared because I had never battled this one before. I don't even know its moveset, what works and what doesn't. I use my last super potions, leaving me with only two herbs and one regular potion left. The Cherim uses Safeguard, which is excellent. That makes sure I don't get damage and it's useless. I use the turn to heal my paralysis, which I was very nervous about. Her magical leaf does a little less than the Roserade, but Struggle does very little damage. More and more I start to lose hope as I see my health going down. When Cherim's lives are below half, I use my last two healing items, bringing me to 73 HP. This is the best I can do. Everything led to this moment. And she uses Safeguard again. Please don't heal, please don't heal. She doesn't. Struggle takes her out and I live on 12 HP. That means that with only a single last potion, an extra critical hit, or a magical leaf instead of the safeguard, I would have lost. But I didn't. And at this point, I am cheering. I beat Gardenia after hours. I save right after, and the in-game clock says a little over 14 hours. After the second gym. With all the resets, you can easily count that to 17 or so, but I can finally say that it has been done. So yeah, I'm cheering, but my problems in Eterna City are not over yet. As a matter of fact, the next sticking point is coming up immediately. After some pretty tough Team Galactic battles, I make my way to the battle against Commander Jupiter. And the problem with her is again that we are going to transform into an awful Pokemon. Zubat. Zubat has Giga Drain, Bite and Wing Attack. Giga Drain does too little so it's basically useless. But even the Zubat does very big damage. It's a 2 hit KO but it takes 3 turns because of the transform turn. So on the 3rd turn I have to win the speed tie and outspeed. Otherwise I take way more damage and I can never win. Now at this point I did pick up the Quick Law. That means that I have a 20% chance to move first, and if I do not get that RNG luck, I still have the 50-50 chance to move first. So my chances to outspeed are a little bit higher, but well, that's all. Let me also just say that I found out that starting with Gen 4, they have removed badge boosts. That means that this speed problem will never go away the entire run. Which sucks, but <laughs> yeah. Once every few battles, I will outspeed the Zubat on turn 3. And out comes Jupiter's Skun Tank. And he is a really big problem because Night Slash nearly takes half of my lives away. So even healing won't do me any good. And thus began the most tedious grind of the entire game. And yeah, we are taking out Bidoof after Bidoof again. Now I have to run back to the Pokemon Center after every trainer battle, but luckily I can now defeat about 3 to 5 Bidoof in one life. They have Rollout now, which I can use against them, but I still have to save after every defeated Bidoof, since if it uses Growl too much, I can still lose at any time. So I spend a long time in his grass, at points where I was just chilling with my roommates while on the side killing hundreds of Bidoof. And I made it to level 37 with 109 HP. Is that going to be enough? I'm not sure again. I do outspeed the Zubat on turn 3, 
So I do get a chance. Now the strategy is this. I have stocked up on energy powder herbs, which heal 50 HP. The Skuntank's Night Slash does about 42 damage. So if I keep healing, in the end I will get a turn where I survive two Night Slashes and I can attack. It also gets the Citrus Berry recovery, which is pretty bad. But what is even worse, when I use this strategy, she will run out of power points. Now, this was what I was going for, but she will start to use Smokescreen and Screech, and I will keep missing my attacks. A lot. A lot, a lot. He cannot attack me anymore, and Struggle is able to take it down in the end, letting me win on 8 HP. Told you I wasn't hyping this run up. But now, a big chunk of the game opens up. We defeat every trainer that we find, which I will skip over. And don't let that fool you, there are some pretty difficult trainers here. Some of them are just impossible, others are really tough. I especially struggled, <laughs> no pun intended, with some mandatory hiker fights. Anyway, I held on and made it to Fantina. And luckily, she isn't as bad. I did defeat her on my third try, but I have to admit that I got very lucky. I transform into the Duskull and I can take it down. She did miss a Will-O-Wisp twice, which would have made my run way harder. Out comes Miss Magius and Shadow Ball does around 60 HP, which is bad, but bam, Shadow Sneak critical hit. This is my first time battling the Miss Magius and I get this Will-O-Wisp and crit luck. The Miss Magius would never have died otherwise. When Haunter comes out, I use a few energy powders. When I'm in range of surviving, I use Shadow Sneak and it's a two hit KO, making me win. Luckily the Haunter didn't get any crits, otherwise it could have been rough. But now that your expectations are lowered, let's fight the rival again. He taught his Staravia double team and yeah, hitting me is really hard for him. Plus Staravia outspeeds everything on his team. That and the fact that flying is a really good type to use against him. His Buizel has taken me out with quick attack a few times, but overall he's not a big deal. Now what I noticed in the upcoming part is that there are sometimes random trainer battles that are way harder than some boss fights. Because most bosses have an entire team of strong Pokemon now, or Pokemon with good movesets. That means that some of them are not so bad to transform into. But weak trainers lead with awful Pokemon, and they are not always able to do the trick. So for instance, I struggled a lot with Ace Trainer Maya and Ace Trainer Dennis. Simple reason is that Rosalia and Gligar are awful to transform into. Especially Ace Trainer Dennis is a pain because the Gligar knows Screech. And I will always get hit with one, but if it uses two, Basically any attack and it takes Ditto out. But with the right luck and some healing items I was able to get through. Be aware that I normally don't use items on random trainers. I really have to conserve my money. Because the amulet coin, which ups the money you gain from defeated trainers, is unobtainable for me. It's located in Amini Square, which Ditto has no access to. So I play incredibly conservatively. In fact, Ditto is so useless that it may not even enter contests. <laughs> oh, pathetic. We reach Veilstone City where we can actually buy battle items. And this sounds great, but they are expensive. But they are worth the money and I do foresee some interesting strategies with these. Okay, the weak trainers are harder issue continues in Maylene's gym. There were in fact some really difficult trainers here. But let's skip to the Maylene fight itself. Maylene is not so bad herself. Mainly because Metatite is excellent to transform into. It knows Confusion, which is good for the Machoke, which is coming up next. She also knows Fake Out, which is unavailable to me, unfortunately, because you can only use that in the first turn, and I need that turn to transform. After beating Metatite with Drain Punch and Rock Tomb, the Machoke is an easy one-hit KO with Confusion, with the right range from there. You can miss the range though, which is bad. With the Lucario I use Rock Tomb to lower its speed, then I outspeed to one hit KO in with Drain Punch. Confusion did surprisingly little by the way. 
Now the fifth gym, Crash Awake, took me about seven tries to beat it. You will get through, but after every battle in this gym, I had to run back to the Pokemon Center to heal, restarting the puzzle. But when we do, at some point we fight the real gym leader, Tuber Caitlyn. <laughs> the battle is perfect. It's like full circle. The first Pokemon challenge I did on this channel was a solo run with Azuril, and we actually get to transform into one this time around. <laughs> and man, is this fight hard. And the main reason for that is that the Azuril knows Charm, which sharply lowers attack. And I cannot have that. I will never deal enough damage to take out the Azuril and then the Azumarill and the Marill after that. Oh yeah, and the Azumarill and the Marill know Aqua Ring, which restore their lives every turn. I got stuck in this fight for over an hour, but in the end, I did find a strategy that worked. Before even transforming, I'm using my only guard spec. So when the Azuril uses Charm, and it will, it won't have any effect. Then use three X attacks before the guard spec runs out. I have to attack, hope I win the speed tie, or don't get charm as an attack. Then the Azumarill comes out and I have to use charm and my remaining water guns. When he gets to minus six attack, rollout does very little to me, but I still have to heal every now and then. Furthermore, I have to hope it doesn't use Aqua Ring and take me out. Then with the Marill I have to risk it and attack it as much as possible. Because Marill has defense curl and I barely do any damage with struggle if that happens. That did cost me 3 runs. But in the end, with the right luck, I did win. Get wrecked Tuber Caitlyn. <laughs> and then there's Crash Awake, but yeah, we can transform into Gyarados. And <laughs> well, that's an excellent Pokemon. So I don't have to explain how that went. Don't get me wrong, it still took me, what, five, six or seven tries, but in this run, that is very good. I really need to skip some parts in this video because otherwise it gets way too long, but there is just so much to talk about. Luckily, we can skip right over the bridge rival fight with Nathan. He hasn't learned from his previous mistake by still knowing double team on this Star Raptor. It was an easy first try victory. But let's talk about the battle with Byron, because he happens to be the steel type gym leader. And several trainers in his gym cost me many healing and axe items. I got Rourke flashbacks all over again. I mean, Byron is his father, but still. Luckily the battle items make quite a bit of difference here. We are transforming into Magneton, which is meh, not ideal, not great. We can work with this. The hard part of this battle is that Byron uses a mix of physical and special moves. My strategy was to load up on X special defense first and then X defend, heal whenever necessary and then load up on X specials. The problem is getting paralyzed and getting hit with metal sound which sharply lowers my special defense which I had just spent two turns raising. The reason I had to spam X defend is because the Steelix knows Earthquake which I am quad weak to. When the Bastiodon comes out, I always hope to get off one metal sound before it uses Taunt. Now this fight took me about 45 minutes, but in the end, I did beat Byron, which cost me a lot of money. We have to fight the Team Galactic bosses, but they are basically three similar fights. Mars, Jupiter and Saturn all have identical teams with one ace that's not too hard to take out. All battles took me about 4-6 to six tries or something. We make our way up to the mountain, all the way up to Snowpoint City, where I battle Candace. We are transforming into Sneasel this time around, and that is great because Sneasel is a top percentage of speedy Pokemon. What I will do is spam X Defend and 2 X Special Defend. Again, of course, heal whenever necessary and Slash is a 3 hit KO, 2 if you get the crit. The Piloswine can't really do all that much to me, so I will heal to full when it's out, so I have the most HP available to fight the last two Pokemon. Out comes the Obama Snow and Focus Blast is the most devastating. Sure, it misses sometimes, but it hits a lot. And without the X Defend, it's a one hit KO onto me. Now when it goes down, I battle the Frostlass and I had saved my feint attacks on purpose. They are super effective and I only need two to take it down. Seventh batch, 
acquired. The way to spear pillar was funny to me, as my last transform powerpoint I believe brought me to the tag battle with Nathan and I can use scumbag strategies this time around. I transform into the rival's munchlax and let it do all the fighting. I keep on using stockpile to raise my defensive stats to just last in this battle. There will be a lot of RNG involved and it will take some trial and error, but after several tries, the rival got smart and battled good. We Spider-Man our way through the distortion world and fight Cyrus, and he is quite challenging. We transform into Houndoom this time around, and this is both good and bad. We have some decent coverage for his team, but then there is Gyarados. The problem is Earthquake, and he has Waterfall. Anyway, Earthquake is a one-hit KO on me. Luckily I do outspeed, but Thunderfang is not enough to take it out, despite being 4 times super effective. So I try something new. I will burn it with the Will-O-Wisp. That means that his attack stat is halved, and I don't nearly take as much damage. Waterfall is also a physical attack luckily, meaning that Gyarados really cannot do all that much. But let me say that he still does decent damage, even when being burned. So what I would do is use 2 or 3 X Defend when battling the Houndoom, and then burn the Gyarados. That way it's basically GG for him. If I want, I can set up X Specials during this time. The flaw in this plan is that Will-O-Wisp has a 25% chance to miss. So, yeah. In my successful attempt, I didn't even set up the X Specials. The burn damage plus the Thunderfang was enough to take it out. I burned the Hunchcrow as well, but that was unnecessary since I got the critical hit Thunderfang, taking it out. Crobat obviously outspeeds, confuses me, and I can take it out attack by attack with the occasional heal. I must say that Cyrus got a lot of critical hits during this time. And crits really mess up my strategy. Not just in this battle, but pretty much in every battle. They are really unfortunate and heartbreaking to see them if my strategy would otherwise have worked. Anyway, the Weavile also outspeed, but with two more energy roots, I am able to overpower him and beat Cyrus. I was pretty nervous for this battle, but in the end, not too too difficult I'd say. I really like transforming into Giratina and obliterating him with his own dragon move, so yeah there's that. Luckily we can leave the distortion world and we make our way to Sunny Shore City. <laughs> but Sunny Shore City is blocked off by Sailor Luther. Oh, this guy. The reason he is so difficult is because we have to transform into Wingle. And come on, we, we all know Wingle is a terrible Pokemon. Well, this Wingle is no exception since it only knows two attacking moves who both suck. Pursuit and Quick Attack. Furthermore, we have Roost, which I really do not care about, and Agility. Agility is great to outspeed Luther's team, but that doesn't really matter. In retrospect, I should have equipped Black Glasses or the King's Rock, but I just had the Quick Claw, like in basically every fight since Gardenia. Now, the only way conceivably to win is to spam 2x Defend, 6x Attacks, and a Dire Hit if you want to test your luck. And with 6x attack, you still just have enough power points to take out the Gastrodon and the Machoke. Come on, man. This is a random sailor that I had never even heard about. Why are you wasting my time by making me lose 13 times? Well, after some pretty heavy gym trader battles, I made my way to the last gym leader, Volkner. And luckily, he is not as difficult as Sailor Luther. I think I beat Volkner in 4 or 5 tries. He leads with Jolteon and that means two things. Two moves become instantly unusable. Literally. We cannot paralyze his Pokemon with Thunder Wave and Charge Beam does literally nothing on the Jolteon because of the Volt Absorb. And Volkner has more Pokemon that will have that ability. So I can only use Quick Attack and Iron Tail. Now Quick Attack is a bad attack and Iron Tail has a 25% chance to miss. With 6x attacks, Jolteon is a 2 hit KO with Quick Attack and Raichu is as well. To withstand the Focus Blast, you can set up the X Defend, but I didn't do that in this battle. 
For the Electivire I use Iron Tail, which you also need two for. I got paralyzed in the process, but I risked it and just healed up, saving a full restore. From there I got pretty lucky. One Iron Tail brought the Luxray to half and got the defense drop. That means that I risk a quick attack to outspeed and it does take him out. And that means that I have successfully acquired all 8 gym badges. And that made me feel really special. So yeah, coming back to where I started this video with. What does losing mean to you? To me it means that you persevere until you finally win. And right now, we are very close. Am I able to win? Well, you must think that we are going to battle the Elite Four. And thinking about the toughest trainer in the region, what comes to mind? Aaron? Lucian? Cynthia? No. <laughs> oh. Ace trainer Mariah. She may as well be the Sinnoh champion. Her battle? Oh, it's really bad. She is located in Victory Road, where I had some pretty difficult battles already. But this mandatory trainer? Wow. Just, just wow. See, a ditto only run relies purely on strategy with a lot of RNG luck involved. Well, this battle is RNG to the max. She leads with Blissey and we transform into that. The problem is that we have Blissey's awful stats and we miss its HP because that is the one thing that doesn't carry over. So what I do is this. We transform and we need to outspeed on turn 3 and hit the sing to put it to sleep. Ace trainer Mariah will then swap into Glalie. Except sometimes she just doesn't and you'll lose. Anyway, she does in this attempt. But I had to make a decision beforehand. Do I risk the prediction and use sing again? Plus it had to land, 75% chance of that. Or do I do the smarter thing and use 1x speed to outspeed the Glalie? Well, as you can see, I opted to do just that. I outspeed it and now I can use another sing and it lands again. Wow, okay. Now I have to spam X defend because crunch does massive damage. Speaking of which, she wakes up after 2 X defend and crunch still does a little below half. Because I outspeed, I can then use sing again to put it back to sleep and use one more X defend and then 6 X attack. Because here's the catch, Blissey has really bad attack and only one attacking move. So I need to take out 3 Pokemon in one move, double edge. And you could use soft boil to heal, but you need every single turn to survive, meaning that I must use energy roots to heal. At one point I went for my last sing and it also hit 75% per attack, eh? Pretty damn lucky. Her crunches did lower my defense twice, meaning I had to use another X defend to refresh it. Once I'm set up with the X attacks, I need to go for it. And that's scary because I don't even know what her third Pokemon is going to be. The Glalie is a two hit KO and out comes the third Pokemon and it's Magnezone. Big oof. Steel types were incredibly difficult to take out in this run, but I have light screen. I set it up. But that was a mistake, because now it goes for barrier, and I am in real trouble now. A steel type with plus two in defense, not really what I want. But I have no choice. I risk it, and it still does around 60% damage. Wow, I have a chance. Flash cannon does almost nothing. I heal up the paralysis, and my fourth double edge takes it out. Now the last Pokemon, Blissey. Luckily, it's asleep. No, it has natural cure! That's really bad. I mean, the Blissey cannot really do that much to me, but I might have to use Struggle again. I risk the double edge and it does... Everything! Oh my god! Was I starting to think that this battle may be impossible? Oh, man. And we still have to start battling the theoretically hardest traders in all of Sinnoh. While well, six fights remaining, starting with Nathan, who ambushes us right before we enter the Elite Four. And he really stepped up his game since the last time. This is the final battle against the rival. 
Now watch this. Star Raptor outspeeds Ditto, making it use close combat on a normal type, instantly stealing about 70% of my lives. Yeah, great, but I will then transform into Star Raptor, but obviously it's too late. I have to keep on healing. And once I've healed, nah, the rival's not such a problem. The rest of his teams are one-hit KOs, I believe. I even outsped the Infernape. And we've beaten the rival for the final time. Don't let that give you a wrong feeling. This battle did cost me six tries. So technically, I'm one for five against him. But hey, I only need one victory to continue. And speaking of which, I'm about to fight Sinnoh's toughest trainers. Will Ditto on level 74 be enough? I'm not quite sure, but leveling up won't really do all that much now, would it? I would have to spend hours to max out my HP to withstand maybe one extra weak attack. So preferably we would win right here. Let's freaking go. The first trainer is Bug Trainer Aaron, and I had a real trouble defeating him. The Pokemon I transform into is Yanmega, and on paper Yanmega is great. It has the speed boost ability, which ups my speed at stage every turn to outspeed his entire team. It knows Double Team, Air Slash, Bug Buzz and U-Turn. But our Pokemon isn't a problem, Aaron's Pokemon are the problem, or to be specific, their damage output. I have the Silver Powder item equipped to do increased damage with Bug type moves. And I can take out the Yen Mega and the Vespaquin with Air Slash, but with the Vespaquin it's only like a 4 out of 5 probability or so. That number is just a guess, but sometimes I would not take it out, resulting into her using Power Jam and not only does that massive damage, but I also have to use a second Air Slash. And since it has the Pressure ability, that means that I've already lost all my Air Slash PP. And that is really bad. So I kept losing at the Yanmega, the Vespaquin, and sometimes I would make it to Heracross, but Stone Edge is a one hit KO from about 85% of my lives. So yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Every now and then I got a funny attempt. See, Yanmega outspeeds my Ditto before I use Transform. Usually it would use Double Team, but sometimes I got U-Turn, making it switch into Heracross. This totally changes the battle because that means that I transform into an entirely different Pokemon. And that has never happened before in the entire run. Pretty funny. Although, <laughs> not so funny because I never even made it past Aaron's second Pokemon as a Heracross. Well, what do we need to win? We need to focus on the Drapion. We take out the Yen Mega and the Vespaquin, assuming I get the range, in one Air Slash each, then set up on the Drapion. Drapion can't really hurt me all that much, especially if I set up 4 X Defend and 5 Double Teams. At some point it realizes, oh shit, cannot attack this thing, better use move that always hits, and it has Aerial Ace. Sure, that will hit every time, but with the X Defend it doesn't do so much. When I'm done setting up my defense, I would set up 2 X Attack and 1 Dire Hit. When I take it out and battle the Heracross, I now have a chance to get past him. He will sometimes still hit an 80% stone edge with plus 5 evasion. And with plus 4 defense, it still does pretty decent damage. But make sure you have an air slash remaining, because that will come in really handy here. With plus 2 silver power boosted bug bus and U-turn, you will be able to beat the Heracross and the scissor that comes out next. And when I got this outcome, I could continue. Can I make a run out of this without saving in between Elite Four battles? Then I battle Bertha, and this battle on the face of it looks quite difficult and quite easy at the same time. Sounds weird, right? Let me explain. She is easy because we can transform into Wishcash, and Wishcash is part water type. All of her Pokemon are ground type, and most of them are even rock type as well. Meaning, Water is 4 times super effective on most Pokemon. But what really makes Bertha kinda tricky is because Wishcast knows physical and special moves. So if I only set up X Defend, that's not gonna be enough. I also have to set up X Special Defend to withstand her Earth powers. 
but I am able to do that if I use them back to back every turn. I believe I set up two of each defensive X items followed by a dire hit and two X attack. I also use two X specials but that is really not necessary. What I do is take out the Wish Cash with Zen Headbutt and her entire team is a one hit KO with Aqua Tail from there. And that brings me to the fight against Flint. Now just like with Cyrus we are transforming into Houndoom. And looking at Flint's team he uses only special moves. That means that the battle after transforming will start by spamming X special defense. I've equipped a King's Rock, which I never got a flinch out unfortunately, even when using Dark Pulse, which also has a 10% chance to flinch every time it's used. So yeah, but anyway, after I can withstand special moves with 3x special defense, I use 2x specials. Make sure you also set up 2x defend and or 1x speed. With this, you outspeed the Infernape and you are able to withstand its earthquake. But first, Wait until Flint sets up the sun, KO the Houndoom with Flamethrower, be smart at the Infernip and don't act as I did here, that was a mistake, KO the Flareon with Sludge Bomb and not Flamethrower, I need to remember that it has Flash Power, damn what was I doing in this battle, I really had no idea, and I had no right to win this battle. But spoiler alert, we do win by one hitting the Rapidash with Sludge Bomb and Dark Pulsing the Magmortar. Wow. I played this battle really poorly, I know. And next up is Lucian. And I think in some ways the battle is kinda similar to Flid's battle. I do equip the Quicklaw again and we are transforming into Mr. Mime. And we use Light Screen, 4x special defense and 4x specials. Right, plus a dire hit to make things possibly more easy. And now in this battle I got Gardenia flashbacks. Because Mr. Mime really likes to set up Reflect as well as Light Scream the moment they run out. Now Reflect is literally useless since I have no physical attacks, but Light Scream? I don't want that up by the time I defeat the Mr. Mime. Once I'm done setting up, I hopefully win the speed tie, attack and see how it goes. Well, it goes pretty well I should say, but it's very tempting to keep using Thunderbolt because Psychic is resisted. But that's not smart, because you really need two Thunderbolts for the Bronze on. Psychic does way too little. Battling Galate is great because Psychic was a one hit KO, albeit with a critical hit. The dire hit I used in this battle gave me really good luck and I gained four critical hits. Even the mighty Alakazam was no match for a crit Thunderbolt. Now like I said before. Losing is getting a shitty feeling so many times that I genuinely want to win. And I gave everything I could. Have I mastered being Ditto's trainer enough? Am I ready to take on Ace Trainer Mira- Oh, <laughs> sorry, wrong champion. Cynthia, the real champion of Sinha. Here is Ditto's final battle. Things are looking great. The final Pokemon we get to transform into is a Spiritomb with 4 attacking moves. Can it be better? Well, yes! Cynthia's Spiritomb does not do so much damage to me. So I can safely set up as much as I want. I set up a few X Special Defend, X Defend, 1 X Speed and 4 X Specials. Oh, and again a Dire Hit for the fun of it. Sometimes I heal with the Energy Root. I then use two Dark Pulses on the Spiritomb to take it out. Out comes the Lucario and... <laughs> Stone Edge does what? 15 HP? Pathetic! Two Psychics take it out. I decide to use Silver Wind on the Milotic. It's a 4 hit KO but it heals. I can then finish it with my remaining Silver Wind and a Dark Pulse. Out comes Togekiss and... What? Oh no. No! No! Shadow Ball doesn't affect it. Oh no! It's a normal type in this gem. Damn it! I forgot! Nowadays it's a fairy type. Whatever. I use Psychic, but it does very little. I get really scared. And I quickly stock up on as much X specials as I can to maximize my special attack stat for my two remaining Psychics. I go for it and... 
it doesn't take it out. And it heals. No, not like this. My last psychic does about 60%. And now I only have shadow balls remaining. That means that I have to try and use as much X attack as possible. Because here we are, I'm going to waste my remaining shadow balls to get to struggle. Can you believe it? Struggle! In the final battle, getting some love. It's great, it's like full circle. But now the moment of truth. I need to heal, you struggle and it takes out the Togekiss. There are two Pokemon remaining, but the scariest Pokemon is here first. Garchomp. I decided to heal up again, just to be sure. I end up with 169 HP, which should be more than enough for the upcoming turns. Then Garchomp outspeeds, but Dragon Rush misses, great! I heal up again, no point in losing now. Let's do this, let's win! It goes for Dragon Rush and... Critical hit. <sighs> So, that stinks. With plus 3 defense, it took me from max HP all the way to 0. So, yeah. I mean, after that first Aaron fight, I got pretty confident that this would be the run. I did even play really, really safe. In other battles, I would risk the crit and sometimes survive with very little health remaining. That will sometimes give Ditto an extra turn as leeway to potentially do an extra attack or set up an extra X item. But I'm pretty sure that I can do it at this level. For a few minutes I was in doubt of leveling up, but the only difference that would make is that Aaron's Vespaquin would be a guaranteed one hit KO with 10 or so levels, which would take really long and I'm not interested in an entire day of grinding Ditto. Not only because grinding is really boring, but with Ditto you always have to keep your focus. You can't just spam the A button and win everything. Luckily, losing to a single wild Pokemon is pretty much off the table at this point. But still, after something like 5 wild battles I'm in the risk of losing. But like I said, it should be doable. I have developed all these strategies in my first full run of the Elite Four. And here, in my second run, I would simply perfect these strategies. Aaron, who took me like 13 attempts before, is now pretty doable with the setup on the Drapion as long as you get the Vespaquin range strategy. And I think he's the hardest Elite Four member. And it's great that the hardest Elite Four member is the first one. Because I do not save in between Elite Four members. That makes it really more tense. since. If I keep losing to stone walls like Rourke, Gardenia, Commander Jupiter, Byron or Cyrus, I can just keep on resetting. Sure, there are much more fun things to do, but still, in the end I will get the outcome that I want, if I keep going. And this is what I mean by wanting to keep going. Sure, losing to a crit from Garchomp after 45 minutes in one Elite Four run leaves a bad taste in your mouth, but now I want to win more than ever. And as I show you my second Elite Four run after losing to Aaron a few more times, I also quickly wanted to say that a Ditto challenge is really fun. I have a blast while playing this. Sure, there were a lot of frustrating points and I genuinely wanted to give up after I had beaten Gardenia and I kept on going because we have to work with all these weird movesets that the AI will never use to its fullest potential. And sure, this run heavily relied on luck but there's also much strategy. Every battle has to be handled differently, which is very fun. We can figure everything out along the way, even if that means that random trainers like Tuber, Caitlyn, Bugcatcher, Donald, Ace Trainer, Dennis, Sailor, Luther, or Ace Trainer, Mariah become stone walls. And yeah, there are more of which I had no time to talk about. <laughs> Oh man, have you ever had a run where these guys were somewhat relevant? No, right? Well, please try a Ditto run sometime. You need good patience, but I will recommend everyone to try a run like this. I really wanted to do this one itemless, but that is really not possible as you have come to know. Struggle does just too much recoil damage. 
And even here in the Elite Four, you'd faint too quickly. So the itemless ditto run is not possible, but we have yet to discover if the run is actually possible with items. For that, let's look at the Lucian battle again, because in this battle I make a very dumb mistake. I transform into the Mr. Mime again and set up my light screen. Yet that gives me time to set up two X special defense, one dire hit and four X specials. I heal the paralysis I got, but Thunderbolt instantly paralyzes me again. Fine then. I set up my reflect, which was unnecessary, and light screen, and then use a full restore. So the same strategy starts. One Thunderbolt and one Psychic for the Mr. Mime, then the same for Espeon, although Lucian did heal it and I lost another Psychic. Then out comes a Bronzong, and I use light screen. Damn, that was a bad play by me. I forgot that it had Calm Mind, which it also used in a previous attempt. But fine, two Thunderbolts will still take it out. But in between those two, he uses Calm Mind again. Meaning that I would now need a third Thunderbolt. It retaliates with Earthquake and I start to worry because it does big damage. I also thought he might be healing, but luckily he didn't. And to make matters worse, I decided to set up Reflect on the Gallade. Why, David, why? It outspeeds and does big damage. I should have just taken it out in one Psychic. <sighs> Whatever. But one Psychic will never do... No. No. It does not take out the Alakazam. Shit. I waste my last Reflect power points, heal up to full when I'm done. First struggle is a critical hit from the Dire hit. Energy Ball brings me to 73 HP, but it's not enough. I have to heal up again. But he goes for Focus Blast and misses. One last struggle takes him out. Damn, just like the Flint battle in the previous attempt, I played really poorly and I had no business winning this battle. But I did. Now Cynthia take two. I think this battle is kind of the same battle. I use all of my drugs on Spiritomb. 3 X special defense, 3 X defense, 1 X speeds, 4 X specials and 1 dire hit. When I'm done, I make sure to use Shadow Ball on the Spiritomb and take out the Lucario with 1 Silver Wind and a Shadow Ball. Now out comes the Garchomp earlier than before and I have to heal up. I wasn't quite ready for him yet, but this time his attacks barely do anything. Two hits don't even bring me to below half, and one Dark Pulse finishes it. Wow, if I would have known that before... <sighs> anyway, <laughs> two Shadow Balls for the Melodic, then Togekiss comes out, and I use Silver Wind. Heal, Psychic, and another to take it down. Now we made it to the final Pokémon, but I really think there is no way we can lose. Nope. It's a one-hit KO with Psychic. <laughs> Meaning that we have finally defeated Pokemon Platinum with only a ditto. Now this run was incredible. So many moments where I wanted to give up, got frustrated or started cheering to my game. All these emotions because I have done it. I couldn't find a single Gen 4 ditto only run on the YouTube. But I can finally say that it has been done. And after failing hundreds of times, I am finally victorious. So this video took a long time to make, and I think you can see why. 35 in-game hours, but with all those resets that easily goes to 45. So if you made it all the way to the end, you are amazing. Thank you for that. This has been yet another obscure video game run, so until next time, I'd say, take care.